Hello, welcome to this video on the chain rule. It's actually a series of videos and let's go ahead and get started. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this calculus journey. How do you take the derivative of a function who is a composite function? Right now we're kind of limited in what we can actually take the derivative of. This will change the entire game. Functions inside of functions, that's the majority of the functions we actually deal with. What does it look like? What are some examples? Well, we have uh, 4x minus x squared, all raised to the fifth. Before, we can only deal with x to the fifth. Now we have an entire function that's going to be raised to the fifth. Or an entire function that's underneath a square root. Or a function inside of a function, actually inside of another function, a triple composite function. What we have to do is figure out who is this inner function, who's the inside function, and who's the outside function. Once we identify that, then we can execute the chain rule. The chain rule says the following. The derivative of such a function is equal to the derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function times the derivative of the inside function. Okay, I agree. Another way you can do this is by doing a renaming. You could let u equal the inside function, and then y will be f of u. Okay, then to execute the chain rule, you do the following. You find dy du, and you find du dx, and you multiply those two together. dy dx is what you're looking for, that's the symbol for the derivative of y with respect to x. It's the prime symbol, okay? And um, it's the partner to the prime symbol. And so we'll take the derivative of y with respect to u and multiply it by the derivative of u with respect to x. Okay? But in doing that, though, there'll be some u's floating around in that first guy, the dy du. But that's okay. You just replace those u's. Okay? Either you do it from the the uh, above or you do it from the below here. One or the one, one or the other. All right, here's example one. 4x minus x squared, who's now raised to the fifth. There's an inside function, 4x minus x squared, and then there's an outside function, that guy is raised to the fifth power. All right, great. So we should let y equal f of x, I'm sorry, y equal f of u, and then u equals g of x. Remember what we said, take dy du, and then take du dx and multiply them together. In the dy du, you'll have some u's floating around. What do you want to do with that? Just replace them. Okay, so the inside function is u, and the outside function is u, you know, in this case, raised to the fifth. Okay, let's take dy du, and let's take du dx. Um, dy du is 5u to the fourth. du dx, oh, I'm sorry, uh, we, can, we can replace the u with the g. So 5 times g to the fourth. Okay, and then du dx is just 4 minus 2x. The derivative is the product of these two. 5 times the function to the 4th, then times the derivative of the function. Okay? So, this happens a lot. We have a function whose raised to a power, a function is underneath a root. And so what I want you to do is have a way to write it without having to go through this. It's kind of like a shortcut, kind of like something that's perfect for like a cheat sheet or something. When you have a function who's raised to a power, here's what you do. Bring the power down, take that function to the one less power. n, f of x to the n minus 1. Then, you multiply by the derivative of that inside function. This way you don't have to do it as this dy du. Um, I entered this notation to your own purpose, though, because in, in future lectures we're going to need the ability to be able to write a derivative in this d notation, especially for uh, related rates. All right, great, that's our first example. All right, second example. Y is equal to the square root of x squared plus 1. 
a function inside of a function. Okay, we can use that rule. And this time we're gonna be going for a second derivative. All right, so we have a function who's raised to the half. We're not gonna set this up with the y and the u, no. We're gonna use that rule that we just discovered that if you have a function that's raised to a power, you bring that power down, take that function to the one less power. Don't stop there though. Remember to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. Multiply by, in this case, 2x. x squared plus 1's derivative is 2x. Okay? In general, if you have the square root of a function, then we could go with the derivative being this kind of action here, 1 half that function to the negative 1 half times that function's derivative. And then you could simplify that by actually putting the the negative one half, you know, making that a root in the denominator. This is a shortcut. If you ever have the square root of a function, your derivative is one over two times the square root of that function times the derivative of that inside function. Okay, great. Uh, we can simplify this because we have to go and take a second derivative in this question. So those twos can cancel out, put that root on the bottom, and we'll have x on top of x squared plus one underneath the root. Okay, great. We're ready for the second derivative, the derivative of the derivative. Later on, we'll find out why this is important to us. But for now, let's just calculate the second derivative by executing what rule? The quotient rule. All right, we take the bottom and we square it. Well, the square root of a square, or the square of a square root is, is going to be the what's underneath. Bring that denominator up to the top. Multiply by the derivative of the top. X's derivative is 1. Then we put a minus sign. And we reverse that. We leave the top alone and we take the derivative of the bottom. But but look at the bottom. The, the denominator is actually the original function. And we've taken its derivative. And so we don't have to do it again. We can just copy it down. Y prime is equal to what's in red there. So we just copy it down, recognizing that the denominator is actually the original function. So when it's time to take the derivative of the denominator, we just copy down the derivative of the original function. Officially, the calculus is over now, but we want to simplify it algebraically. And so we can accomplish that by uh, multiplying those x's together and getting minus x squared. And then recognizing that um, we can clear out the fraction. We're going to multiply by that denominator of root x squared plus 1. And multiplying the first fraction, the first part of the numerator by that root, you get root times root and they cancel out. Multiplying the second part by that root, it kills the denominator, you just get the minus x squared. Underneath, if you have uh, the one guy without the root and the guy with the root, we're gonna put those together. We're gonna write them first like this though, actually the outside, you know, root, um, the root of x squared plus one times the x squared plus one. We're actually gonna write it like that at first, but then we'll fix it on the next step. Okay, what's going on in that numerator now? The x squared is canceled. You just have a one. If you ever have something times the root of itself, what's the real exponent there? The guy on the outside is to the first power, and then the root is to the half power. What do you do with exponents? If you have 3 to the 2 and 3 to the 5, what do you do with those exponents? You add them together, 3 to the 2 plus 5. So if you have x squared plus 1 to the 1 and x squared plus 1 to the 1 half, you add them together, and you get 3 halves. That's it. That is the derivative of the derivative. That's your second derivative. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and end the video now. There's going to be more example videos coming up. And then at the end, we're going to have a nice summary. We have a nice little uh, set of slides where we can say, here's a function, here's this derivative because of the chain rule. Here's the chain rule version of that derivative. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm happy to help you through this journey. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe. And um, yeah, find your way to my website, calcoach.com, if you want to find some resources. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.